Tis the season for shopping and hopefully scoring some great deals while you're at it. Which is great because with Rakuten, it's also the season for stacking up the savings. Use Rakuten to stack cash back on top of holiday sales at thousands of stores like Levi's, Best Buy, and Sephora. That's right, that's savings on top of savings. With Rakuten, you can save money on gifts for everyone on your list, from toys for the little one, to kitchen gear for the hostess with the mostess, to electronics for yourself. Shopping with Rakuten means you get to spend more time locating the perfect gift and less time trying promo codes that don't work. And did I mention that Rakuten is super easy to use? Just start your shopping at Rakuten.com or in the Rakuten app. Feel free to browse and shop just like you normally would, and then you get cash back by PayPal or check. It's truly a no-brainer. Join for free at Rakuten.com or download the Rakuten app. That's R-A-K-U-T-E-N, Rakuten.com. Wizards, witches, talking sandwiches, pirates, kid dragons, dolphins that shoot lasers from their eyes, evil gangs of bad guy lobsters, powerful magical artifacts, bandits, abandoned castles, ghosts who live in abandoned castles, goblins who rule the underworld, Steve the Goblin King riding a dog into battle against an army of mutated animals, dragons, robots, robot dragons, a werewolf tree that leads to a strange werewolf dimension. The Evil Witch Queen, The Dark Side, The Kid Stories Podcast features adventures full of excitement and funny and weird and creepy. You're going to love it. So check out The Kid Stories Podcast wherever you listen and catch up on all the exciting episodes. Hi, my name is Adam Gidwitz. I'm an author. I'm also a storyteller. I like telling all kinds of stories, but I especially like telling grim fairy tales. You may think you know grim fairy tales, and you may think that they are sweet and boring. But listen, those tales you heard were the cute, happy, little kid bedtime versions of the grim tales. The original grim fairy tales aren't like that at all. They're weird, and sometimes gross, and often scary. In other words, they're grim. And I'm about to host a virtual storytelling session and tell one of the original grim, grim tales to a bunch of kids. Do you want to join me? Do you want to hear a grim fairy tale? I don't know if you said yes or no because I can't hear you. So let me help you decide. On a scale of grim, grimmer, and grimmest, this story is grimmer. It's suspenseful and, for a moment, sad. Also, something gross and very strange happens. If I get to a part of the story and you start to feel scared or uncomfortable, this is what you could do. You could turn down the volume and count to five, then turn the volume back up. If it still seems like a part you don't want to hear, turn it down and count to five again. You know how much weird and gross and scary you're ready for. You know what you need. Okay, I'm about to join the session. There are kids inside waiting to hear a grim fairy tale. So, are you coming in? Grim, grimmer, grimace. Okay, are we ready to start the story? Yes. Yep. Yep. You look very prepared. Uh huh. Can you tell me about your setup? What do you have going on there? Um, I currently have a fox dress on. I have a bunny blanket on, and I have I am surrounded by like ten stuffed animals right now. So I'm ready. You're so ready. (laughs) But what's interesting is that I see a whole bunch of stuffed animals, but not the animal that is in this story's title. (gasps) Because the story is called The Goose Girl. (gasps) I am so happy and confused at the same time. (laughs) (laughs) Excellent. Well, let's get started and figure out why it's called The Goose Girl. Once upon a time, there were two girls who were raised together in a palace. One of these girls was a princess. 
and the other one was a duchess, the princess's cousin. A duchess is almost as important as a princess, but not quite. Nope. The princess was called Louisa, and she was kind-hearted and sweet. She always thanked her servants when they brought her anything. Your Majesty, your royal tweezers. Thank you very much. She always offered to help clear the table and clean the dishes. Oh, please, Miss Henshaw, let me do that. Think of your back. And she shared everything she had with her cousin, the Duchess, whose name was Augusta. What's mine is yours, Augusta. You know that. But the Duchess, Augusta, was as spoiled and cruel as Louisa was kind-hearted and sweet. She never let Louisa or the king and queen see it, but she treated everyone else in the palace terribly. Servants brought her food. I've been waiting long enough, and now it's cold. And cleared the table for her. Don't forget my napkin. It's soiled. And did the dishes. Do hurry up, would you? And she never once offered to help. Furthermore, Augusta was jealous of Louisa. Even though she lived in the same palace and had all the same fancy clothes and things, in her heart she knew that Louisa was the princess, and she was just a duchess. And it made Augusta burn with jealousy. Okay, do you understand this? Does it make any sense? Have you ever felt uncontrollably jealous towards someone? Yes. Yes. One time my sister, she had to get her tooth pulled and she couldn't even feel it and she got like an Xbox for it. <laughs> and she has it she has it in her room now. Oh my god. And it's hers. Oh my gosh, yeah. Excellent story. Okay, what was a time when you felt super jealous? Store clerks. They get to keep all the stuffed animals for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. Now, it was the tradition in that kingdom that when a princess was old enough, she would marry a prince from a certain faraway land. Louisa had never met the prince that she was destined to marry, and she was a bit nervous about it. But she was also looking forward to it because it was well known in her kingdom that the princes and kings of that faraway land were among the kindest and wisest in the world. One day, as Princess Louisa and Duchess Augusta were discussing this tradition, Louisa said, I'm a little nervous about marrying someone I've never met, but I think it'll be okay. Don't you think it'll be okay? The princes of the faraway land are supposed to be very kind and very wise. And Augusta replied, Ugh. Who cares if the prince is wise and kind? He's a prince. Of course it'll be okay. Besides, everything is always okay for you. Well, at last the day arrived for Louisa to set out on her journey to the faraway land to meet her prince. But she wasn't going to travel alone because the journey was very long and it was tradition in their kingdom for princesses to always take one companion with them when they went to meet their prince. Oh shoot, she's gonna take Augusta and then Augusta's gonna kill Louisa. You think she's gonna kill Louisa? Yeah. Let's find out. Louisa didn't have to think hard about who she'd take on the trip with her. She chose Augusta. <gasps> no! Bad, bad, bad! And Augusta smiled oh so sweetly. It was only after Louisa left her alone that Augusta went back to snapping at the servants. Hurry up! Also, she began scheming up an evil plan. Now, Louisa had a horse, whom she loved very much, named Falada. Aww. Yeah, you like horses, right? You're gonna really like this horse. Yeah. I wish I had a horse. I know, me too. Me too. Falada was very special to Louisa. He was her best friend. Falada was tall and strong and had a beautiful chestnut coat. And also, he could talk. <gasps> what? What? Yeah. What? Falada never talked very much. Just a little, because he was a horse, after all, and horses don't tend to have a lot to say. But he loved Louisa just as she loved him. Augusta also had a horse. Actually, it was a mule, which is half horse and half donkey. <laughs> I would still love it. This mule was almost as tall as Falada, and almost as strong, and he had a beautiful white coat. But he didn't talk. Also, he and Augusta weren't friends because Augusta didn't make friends with animals. Or really people, either. Oh. <laughs> On the day of the young women's departure for the faraway land, Louisa put her hair in long braids with ribbons at the end, dressed in a beautiful traveling skirt, and carried the few belongings she would bring with her outside. Augusta had the servants carry out her bags. Ugh, that's heavy. You carry it. 
As Louisa was strapping her things to Falada's back, and Augusta was rearranging her traveling dress for the fourth time with a dissatisfied air, Louisa's mother, the Queen, came to Louisa. Daughter, come here. I want to show you something. The Queen took out a white handkerchief, and then she took out a knife. Mother! said Louisa. What are you doing? And the Queen said, I am making a charm to protect you. As Louisa and Augusta watched, the Queen cut her own finger with the knife, so that three drops of red blood fell on the white handkerchief. And she said, Keep this handkerchief with you, and nothing bad can happen to you. Okay, why would a handkerchief with three drops of blood on it protect Louisa from anything bad happening to her? Because this is a fairy tale, and fairy tales are weird like that. Yes, I think that is exactly the right answer. I agree. Also, maybe the blood, like, symbolizes her mother's love or something, right? Your mother's love can keep you safe. Maybe? Maybe. Maybe. Once Louisa had tied the bloody handkerchief around her wrist, the queen asked Augusta to take good care of her daughter on the ride. Augusta smiled very, very sweetly and said, Of course I will. Do you believe her? No, no. I don't believe you. <laughs> Princess Louisa and Duchess Augusta set off. The day was hot, and soon both of the young women became thirsty. Louisa loosened the handkerchief around her wrist, just a little, as it was making her feel sweaty. Soon they came to a clear pond. Louisa said to Augusta, It's hot. Should we stop and get some water? Augusta snapped back. Why are you looking at me? If you're thirsty, why don't you get it? And get me some while you're at it. Louisa had never heard Augusta talk like this. So, confused and a little frightened, she got down from Falada to get water for both herself and Augusta, and also for Falada and for Augusta's mule. Augusta called to her, Hurry up! I'm dying of thirst over here. When Louisa got back on Falada, she heard the horse whisper, Oh, if your mother only knew, her heart would break in two. If only her mother knew what? How mean Augusta was. How Augusta was treating her. Yeah, exactly. They journeyed on for a ways, and the sun kept shining. Louisa loosened the handkerchief just a little more. Oh, she's going to loosen it three times, and then it's going to fall off. Interesting. Let's see. The day got hotter and hotter, and eventually Augusta said, I'm going to pass out. Ugh. Get me some water, now! No. No, let her pass out. Let her pass <laughs> let out. Let her pass out, yeah. Yeah. yeah! Louisa didn't know what had come over Augusta, and she certainly didn't like being spoken to that way. But Louisa was kind-hearted and patient, and she figured that Augusta must just be uncomfortable from all this riding on such a hot day. So she got off a falada and got them some more water from a small stream. Augusta drank it greedily and didn't even say thank you. When Louisa got back up on Falada, he whispered, Oh, if your mother only knew, her heart would break in two. They rode on for a while farther, until they came to a large and swift river. Augusta said, More water! Now! Don't make me ask again. Louisa glowered at Augusta, but she did as Augusta demanded because she didn't want to start a fight. Oh, I want to. She has a good heart. <laughs> she has a good heart. You would rather start a fight, huh? Yes. I would. Me too. <laughs> She's too sweet. I would be like, get your own water and then push it into the pond. Just like, there, now yeah. you'll never die of first. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you died of drowning. Oh, that was dark. <laughs> Louisa bent over the edge of the river, but the bank was steep and she had to reach far down to get the water. As she did, the handkerchief, which was now quite loose on her wrist, was pulled by the current and swept away before Louisa could grab it. No! Augusta saw this happen. She grinned. Why is Augusta grinning now? Because she's going to kill her. Yeah, because now that the handkerchief can't protect her, now she can kill her. When Princess Louisa returned to Augusta with the water, she yelped in fear. <gasps> Augusta had climbed off her mule and was holding a very small, very sharp dagger. <laughs> Augusta said, Trade clothes with me, dearest Louisa. No one in the faraway kingdom has ever seen you or me. So from now on, I am the princess, and you are the duchess. Swear under the open heavens that you will never tell anyone. And if you do, may you die instantly. And she pointed the sharp dagger at Louisa's throat. 
Louisa did not want to swear, but what other choice did she have? I swear under the open heavens that I will never tell anyone that I am the princess and you are the duchess. And if I do tell, may I die instantly. And Augusta said, Good. Because she knew that once upon a time, if you swore under the open heavens like that, you would be held to what you said. In other words, if Louisa tells, what will happen? She'll die. die. She'll die. Now, can that happen in real life? No. Oh, no. If some other kid or grown-up does something that is inappropriate or wrong and makes you swear not to tell, and you swear, can you still tell a grown-up that you trust? Yes. Yes, you have to still tell a grown-up that you trust. Or tell a trusted horse. Or tell your best friend the trusted horse. But then also an adult, yes. Once Louisa had sworn never to tell, Augusta got up on Falada. As she did, Falada murmured, Oh, if her mother only knew, her heart would break in two. And Augusta snapped, Shut your long horsey mouth! And she kicked him so he would ride on. Louisa climbed on the mule and followed after. When Louisa and Augusta arrived in the faraway land, the prince, whom Louisa was supposed to marry, and also his father, the king, were waiting for them, along with a band playing music and people waving flags in celebration. The prince instantly ran up to Augusta, thinking that she was the princess, because she was wearing the clothes of a princess. Oh, wise and kind princess, welcome to our kingdom. He said all that because it was believed in the faraway kingdom that all the princesses who came from Louise and Augusta's kingdom were indeed wise and kind. And that was true. Except, of course, Augusta was not the princess. The prince helped Augusta off of Falada, and he instantly got down on one knee and said, Will you marry me? Because that was the tradition. And Augusta said, Of course. No! No! no. Now that they were engaged to be married, the prince quickly led Augusta inside the palace to get cleaned up after her long journey, and everyone went with them. Everyone, except for Louisa. After a while, the king looked out a palace window and saw that Louisa was still sitting on the mule. The king said to Augusta, Did you bring someone with you? There's a young woman sitting on a mule out there. And Augusta replied, Oh, her? She's just a servant who acts like a princess. (gasps) Wow. Uh, Should I invite her inside? Heavens no! She's such a pain! Give her a job far, far away from the palace. I never want to see her again. So the king, who was kind and wise like all the kings and princes of this kingdom, but who also wanted to follow the wishes of his son's bride-to-be, went outside to help Louisa find a job far away from the palace. When the king came up to Louisa, he noticed that she was on the verge of tears. He said to her, Excuse me, young lady, are you all right? Louisa wanted to tell him everything. He seemed just as kind and wise as she'd always heard the kings and princes of this land were. But she didn't dare. Why? Because she would die. So Louisa just shrugged. The king said, The princess has asked that we give you a job far away from the palace. What kind of job would you like? Louisa had never had a job before, and she did not know what to say. But just then, a boy called Little Conrad was passing by with a flock of geese. He was the goose boy, which meant he made sure none of the geese ran away or got eaten by a fox. The king saw him and called out, Are you there, Little Conrad? Take this young woman with you and teach her to tend the geese. She can be a goose girl. And Little Conrad said, Okay. How old is Louisa, by the way? She's just old enough to get married. So how old is little Conrad? How old is little Conrad? He sounds like a little kid. Maybe five? Yeah, maybe. Okay, then a five-year-old would be teaching a princess. That's so cute. It is so cute. That is so cute. Aww. So Louisa went with little Conrad. They went down to a stream where the geese liked to hop in the water and splash around. What do we do now? Louise asked little Conrad. Just make sure the geese don't wander off, said little Conrad. Then he began to run around and play, and (laughs) Louisa took the braids out of her hair and began to brush it, leaving the silken ribbon sitting beside her on the riverbank. Little Conrad saw the beautiful silken ribbons, and he wanted one. 
so he crept closer and closer until, when Louisa wasn't looking, he grabbed a ribbon. <laughs> he taunted her the way a little boy taunts his big sister. I got your ribbon, I got your ribbon. Suddenly, without knowing why she said it, Louisa said, Blow, wind, blow. Take Conrad's hat away. Don't let him find it until I've combed my hair today. Suddenly, a great wind came up and blew little Conrad's cap off. I bet Conrad is like, okay, what the heck is happening right now? <laughs> he didn't tell us she knew magic. Yeah. Little Conrad was shocked, and actually, so was Louisa. Oh. But she laughed and watched him drop the ribbon and chase his cap all around the field as she sat and combed and then braided her hair again and put the ribbons back in it. Meanwhile, back at the palace, Augusta was being treated like a princess. And she loved it. She ordered everyone around. Get me another scoop of ice cream. And no cherry on top this time. She laughed at anyone who made a mistake. <laughs> you clumsy fool. And she sent back every dish at least twice before she would taste anything. Ew! This looks gross. Make it again! The prince and the king were... perplexed. They had believed that the princesses and queens from Louisa and Augusta's kingdom were the kindest and wisest in the world. And this princess, well, she didn't seem wise or kind at all. And then a stable boy appeared and asked Augusta what was to be done with her horse, Falada. She said, I don't want it anymore. Take it away and kill it. <gasps> Excuse me? Everyone was horrified. <gasps> The stable boy said, You want me to kill your horse? Uh, but he's beautiful, and he seems so easygoing and sweet. Oh, he's not, said Augusta. He's the worst. He tried to throw me a dozen times on our ride here. He pretends to be kind and good-natured, but actually, he's a horrible, mean creature. Oh, you mean like you? <laughs> yeah. Well, the stable boy, and the prince, and even the king tried to convince Augusta not to have the horse killed, but she would not change her mind. You see, she had realized something. Falada was a talking horse. So what? Why might this be a problem? Oh! Yes? Because um, the horse heard her say that um, she wanted to be the princess and she would be the duchess. Yep. So he didn't swear, the horse didn't swear to not tell, so he could tell and nothing would happen to him. He could tell them the truth. Finally, Augusta said to the stable boy, If you won't cut off that horse's head, I'll have your head cut off. Well, the prince and the king were horrified. <gasps> and maybe the prince was starting to have second thoughts about marrying Augusta. But marriage between the prince and princess of these two kingdoms was required by law, treaty, and tradition. And also, maybe she had a good reason for ordering this horrible thing? Maybe? So, very reluctantly, the stable boy went to the stable to kill Falada. This message is for the grown-ups. The holiday season is here, which means my already busy life as a dad just got way busier. I love cooking holiday meals for my family, but with shopping for food and presents and travel to the in-laws, I have no time or mental space to think about other meals. Thankfully, there's HelloFresh. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. They deliver right to my house all the pre-portioned ingredients I need to make easy homemade meals. All the proteins, veggies, sauces, spices, and more arrive in a box with simple instructions to walk me through each step of the cooking process. I can choose meals that match my family's lifestyle, from fit and wholesome to family-friendly options for those of us with kids, which I'm guessing is probably you. And right now, because you listen to Grim, Grimmer, Grimmest, you can get 10 free meals at HelloFresh.com slash free grim. Applied across seven boxes, new subscribers only, varies by plan. That's 10 free HelloFresh meals just by going to HelloFresh.com slash free grim. For many businesses, the holiday season can be both an exciting and stressful time. 
With so many balls in the air, one thing you definitely want to know you can rely on is how you're selling your products. And with Shopify, you can rest easy knowing it's the home of the number one checkout on the planet. Nobody does selling better than Shopify. And when it comes to successful brands like Aloe, Allbirds, or Skims, an often overlooked secret is all the things that go on behind the scenes that make selling, and for shoppers, buying, simple. For millions of businesses, if you take a peek behind that curtain, you'll see that Shopify is what makes it all possible. ShopPay boosts conversions up to 50%, so that's more happy customers and way more sales going. It's true all the time, but especially this time of year, your commerce platform better be ready to sell wherever your customers are scrolling or strolling, on the web, in your store, in their feed, and everywhere in between. Businesses that sell more, sell on Shopify. Upgrade your business and get the same checkout we use for Realm Merch with Shopify. Sign up for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash realm, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash realm to upgrade your selling today. Shopify.com slash realm. Okay, how are you all doing? You're upset, right? Yeah. All right. Something terrible might happen, but I promise you, everything is going to be okay. The stable boy took a big axe and was just about to cut off poor Falada's head when Louisa came back in from tending the geese. Ah! What are you doing to Falada? The princess told me to kill him. What? Please, don't do it. I have to, or else she'll have me killed. Louisa threw her arms around Falada's neck and wept, <laughs> which is when Falada whispered in her ear. Don't worry, princess. I'll be fine. Remember, I'm a talking horse. Louisa pulled away and looked into Falada's big, deep eyes and said, Huh? <laughs> Falada said it again. Trust me, I'll be fine. I'm a talking horse. Louisa replied, Yeah, but you won't be a talking horse after he cuts off your head. You'll be a dead horse. <laughs> but again, Falada said, Trust me. Also, ask the stable boy to put my head somewhere I can see you, and you can see me every day. What? That's gross and sad. Are you sure? That's horrible. You're just like, hi, dead head of my horse. One last time, Balada said, Princess, trust me. Now, the stable boy hadn't heard any of this. He'd stepped away to give Louisa one last moment with the horse that she seemed to love so much. But when he came back, Louisa asked that, if he really must kill the horse, would he nail its head to the bridge that led to the stream where she and little Conrad tended the geese? That way she could see her friend, Falada, and remember him. And the stable boy said, What? That's gross and sad. Are you sure? Louisa wasn't sure. But she trusted Falada. So she nodded. And so... It was done. The next day, as Louisa and little Conrad were leading the geese out to the stream, they walked under Falada's head. Oh, that's disgusting. Yeah, it is disgusting. And as they did, Falada's mouth began to move. Falada's head said, Oh, if your mother only knew, her heart would break in two. Louisa and Conrad said, <laughs> oh my god! But then Louisa clambered up the stone side of the bridge and threw her arms around Falada's decapitated head and only got a little blood on her dress because it had mostly dried. <laughs> I'm gonna puke, I'm gonna puke. Falada whispered, I told you to trust me. Now go, be on your way. So Louisa and little Conrad went on their way. Soon they reached the stream and Louisa let down her hair and started to comb it, and little Conrad really wanted one of those silk ribbons. He snuck up behind Louisa, but Louisa saw him coming and said, Blow, wind, blow! Take Conrad's hat away. Don't let him find it until I've combed my hair today. And the wind suddenly picked up little Conrad's hat and blew it in dizzying circles, and he had to keep jumping up and down and running in circles until finally he caught it. <laughs> By which point, Louisa had finished combing her hair and braiding it and putting the ribbons back in. Life went on like this. 
Every day, Louisa and little Conrad would walk under Falada's head, and Falada would say, Oh, if your mother only knew, her heart would break in two. And while Louisa got used to it and was happy to see her beloved Falada and hear his voice, and she would throw her arms around the horse's head, <laughs> little Conrad never failed to scream in terror. <laughs> because it was a talking horse's head, and it was objectively freaky. <laughs> Then Louisa and little Conrad would sit by the stream, and little Conrad would try to steal a ribbon. And Louisa would say, Blow, wind, blow. Take Conrad's hat away. Don't let him find it until I've combed my hair today. And the wind would carry little Conrad's hat away. <gasps> Louisa could not understand why she suddenly seemed to have magical powers, and why she only seemed to have them here, by the stream. I have an idea. What do you think? I think because she dropped her, her handkerchief there. Oh, tell explain what you mean. I mean, no. When she got water for Augusta, yeah. she, the handkerchief around her wrist just dropped into the stream. And then the stream is where the geese played in, so maybe she has magical powers only there. Interesting. Louisa did not understand why she suddenly had magical powers there by the stream until one day when she bent over the stream to take a drink of water. And she saw, caught between two rocks by the bank, handkerchief. handkerchief! Louisa picked up the handkerchief and held it to her cheek. And then she tied it very tightly now around her wrist. At just that moment, little Conrad leapt forward and tried to steal a silken ribbon. But Louisa was too fast. Blow, wind, blow! Take Conrad's hat away. Don't let him find it until I've combed my hair today. And the hat blew off little Conrad's head. But on this day, little Conrad did not go chasing it. Instead, he decided he'd had enough. This girl seemed to be able to control the winds, and every day a horse's head talked to them, and she hugged it, and little Conrad decided that he needed to tell someone what was happening. So he went to the palace, and he went looking for... Augusta. 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 The king. The king. And not Augusta, thankfully. Little Conrad told the king. So every day on our way out of town, with the geese, we walk under a horse's head, and then the head talks to Louisa, and then she hugs it, and then she talks to the wind, and the wind listens. Well, the king thought that this was very suspicious. So that very day, he went to find Louisa. He walked under the bridge where Falada's head was nailed up and walked out to the stream. The king found Louisa with the geese, with the handkerchief tied around her wrist and the spots of blood on the collar of her dress. He asked her to explain what was happening. But Louisa refused. Why did she refuse to explain what was happening? <gasps> oh, because then she because would then die. die. Because she would die instantly. The king said, Something very suspicious is going on. And Louisa said, I agree. Because she didn't think saying that would trigger instant death. I think I should get to the bottom of it, said the king. I really agree, said Louisa. Even though she was taking a risk that maybe lightning would shoot down from the open skies and incinerate her, or maybe an anvil would fly out of nowhere and knock her head off, or maybe you get the idea. <laughs> but none of that happened. The king said, Well, if you're not going to tell me what's going on, how can I get to the bottom of it? Louisa glanced up at the skies, winced, and said, Ask the horse. Suddenly, no lightning came out of the sky. No anvil flew out of nowhere. She did not die. Louisa stopped wincing. After all, she hadn't told him. So the king went back to the bridge and stood under the horse's head. And the king asked Falada, What can you tell me about the goose girl, Louisa? And Falada told him, Everything. That night, the king brought Louisa into the castle. He told her, Hide under the great table where we'll have our dinner and listen to what we say. So Louisa did. Soon after, the prince and Augusta came in and sat down to eat. The king said, Today I heard the strangest story about a princess who was betrayed by her own cousin. Augusta cried in horror. Oh, how awful! Can you imagine? Why do you think she's answering that way? Because, because she did. <laughs> she is the cousin. <laughs> yeah, she's the cousin. The king went on. 
This cousin was supposed to be the princess's friend and lifelong companion. But she stole the princess's clothes and made the princess pretend to be her servant on pain of death. And Augusta began to feel a little nervous. So, more loudly than before, she cried, Oh, how repulsive! The king said, And the princess was supposed to marry a prince, but the cousin tricked the prince into asking her to marry him instead. So the cousin and the prince were engaged. No! cried Augusta, trying very hard now to hide how familiar the story sounded to her. The king went on. And to top it all off, the cousin banished the true princess, so the princess had to work with the filthy farm animals. And Augusta, more loudly and dramatically than before, exclaimed, How disgusting! Really, that is the most awful, repulsive, disgusting thing I have ever heard! Then why did you do it? <laughs> she was really playing up her reaction, of course, because she was terrified the king and the prince might suspect that she had done the same thing. Well, duh! <laughs> <laughs> The king said, What punishment on earth is good enough for a betrayer such as this? I can't think of any, said Augusta very loudly. Nothing is awful enough. Uh, she shouldn't say that. Hmm, nothing? What about hanging? Make it worse. I have an idea. Getting your body ripped in half. What about her body getting ripped in half? Make it worse. <laughs> <laughs> The most horrible way to die yeah. is head exploding and bunny farts. <laughs> <laughs> the king said, Ooh, What about so many bunnies farting on her that her head explodes? And Augusta screamed, Yes! That's what she deserves! The king suddenly became very still. Then that's just what you'll get. The color drained from Augusta's face which is when Louisa came out from under the table. When Augusta saw her, she bellowed, You! You swore under the open heavens you wouldn't tell! You will be struck down dead for your oath-breaking! I didn't tell, said Louisa. Falada did. Augusta's mouth fell open. But I, I thought... I, I thought Falada was dead! And Louisa replied, Yes, but he's a talking horse. That doesn't explain anything! <laughs> but it was too late. She was already being dragged off to a room full of hundreds and hundreds of very flatulent bunnies who would fart on her until her head exploded. <laughs> That's creepy. Beautiful. And then Louisa and the prince were engaged and eventually married. And Falada's head was brought into the castle and Louisa talked to it all the time. It's like her personal advisor. Yeah, it's like her dead horse head personal advisor. <laughs> and Louisa took the braids out of her hair and gave the ribbons to little Conrad. <laughs> and they all lived happily ever after. The end. Good always when bad. Good always defeats bad in these stories. It's true. Okay, anyone have any questions about this story? Um, why shall Conrad just sit there while Louisa just hugs a dead head? <laughs> he's a like dead horse head. Good point. No, like while Louisa's like hugging it, he's just like looking around. He's like <laughs> thinking of other stuff. <laughs> this must, Nothing this weird must is be happening. Traumatizing Nothing weird for happening. Him. This it's must fine. be traumatizing for him. He's five years old. Yeah. Just like any kid listening to this story right now must be traumatized. <laughs> oh my god. I am. <laughs> <laughs>Grim Grimmer Grimmest is a Pinna original production, created, written, and narrated by me, Adam Gidwitz, author of A Tale Dark and Grim, co-written by Ali Horn, produced and edited by Ilana Milner, casting by Paula Gammon Wilson, voice direction by Ilana Milner and Paula Gammon Wilson, sound design and mixing by Beat Street NYC, executive produced by Anne Richards, production support by Ashley Beecher and Thaddeus Danqua. Characters voiced by Allison Lee Rosenfeld, Baron Bass, Billy Bob Thompson, Kat Pertano, Sanofia Mitchell, Colin Ryan, Dylan Jones, Erica Schroeder, Kaylin Clinton, Kylie Claxton, Lori Himes, Michael Crouch, Mike Pollock, Nicholas Corda, and Rob Morera. Special thanks to all the kids who joined us for our storytelling sessions. You guys are awesome.
Hi, I'm Jennifer, a founder of the Go Kid Go Network. At Go Kid Go, putting kids first is at the heart of every show that we produce. That's why we're so excited to introduce a brand new show to our network called The Search for the Silver Lining, a fantasy adventure series about a spirited young girl named Isla who time travels to the mythical land of Camelot. Look for The Search for the Silver Lining on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts.